Hello, Miss Kathy here, Sturgis Public Library. This is the week I am on vacation. So I wanted to show you the crafts I have for you in the grab and go bags for our animals from Europe. And today I'm doing two crafts. We are going to make, the first one is going to be a hedgehog. You are going to get a paper plate and that's it, a paper plate. The instructions, well, I will give you the instructions too. The instructions are right here. Very easy. You're gonna actually be practicing some of your cutting skills with the scissors. So it says, this comes from craftymorning.com. It's a hedgehog paper plate craft. And it says all you need is a white paper plate, scissors, and a marker. Well, guess what? I forgot my scissors. Let me go back to the drawer. Oops, here's some right here on top. Got them. You're gonna need your scissors. You're gonna need your white paper plate. And it says a marker. Let me move that out of the way, because that's the second craft. All you need the marker for is to draw where you're gonna cut out the hedgehog's face and nose. So it says start by folding a paper plate in half. Try to cut and copy from my instructions below. So I already cut, folded my paper plate in half. Just, just what it says. Take a paper plate, fold it in half, and then I made sure I kind of bent mine. So when I took my marker and I drew the instructions she showed on how to draw his face, you want to give his pokies a little bit of room over top of his head and then his nose. So just freehand draw it. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can just freehand draw it on there. And now you cut that part off. So I'm gonna start down here at his nose and I'm gonna cut around and back up. And there it is. There's my hedgehog. There's my hedgehog body. Now I said we're going to be practicing our scissor skills because it says next, once you've cut the plate, start cutting slits all along the outside of the plate. Then you'll draw a face with the marker and if you want the hedgehog to stick together, you will just put some glue in the middle. So I'm just gonna start cutting his porcupine quills. He's not a porcupine though, he's a hedgehog. So I'm gonna cut him, I can cut him thick, I can cut him thin. Actually, it's pretty easy because I'm just pretty much following the ridges on my paper plate. So here we go, cut, thin, thinner, thicker, whatever you want. Give him his hedgehog quills. There is a cute story called Ouch about all the things that get stuck in the hedgehog's quills. There it is. Look at that. I got him all fringed. And now, if I want him to stay together, I just have to put glue in there. So I'm going to grab, actually I have a glue stick right here. I'm gonna grab my, grab my glue stick and I'm going to just put glue right inside there. So when I push it together, Smash it down. There it is, he'll stick together. I love his quills. Now I need to give him a face. So the face has a nose, a little bit of a mouth, an eye, and an ear. So I'm gonna take my black marker and color in his nose. If you don't have markers, you can use crayons. If you have paint, it would be kind of fun to paint. There's his nose. I'm gonna give him just a little bit of a smile. You know what, I'm gonna give him a red smile because I have a red marker here. So I'm gonna give him a little bit of a red smile. There's his smile. Maybe I will give him a blue eyeball. Maybe my, let's see, where did, oh, it goes right up here. There. Look at his fun little eyeball. 
And now I'm going to give him his ear. I'm going to give him a little bit of a C, the letter C for his ear. There, your hedgehog is done. Oh, pretty simple, wasn't it? But we got to do some cutting skills, practice our cutting with our scissors. Now, if you wanted to be really fancy, you could color your, before you cut him or anything, you could color him brown or gray. What color is a hedgehog? Speckled, you could speckle him. If you wanted to give his pokies some color, I would probably do this before I cut him, but you could <laughs> just put some color on there. I can't do it upside down. And now you can see his pokies a little bit easier. Super simple, a lot of fun. Hedgehogs, there's stories about hedgehogs from the country of Europe. I wonder where hedgehogs live in Europe. We might need to investigate and find out. So there is your very simple craft using the paper plate for the hedgehog. I will set this one aside because next is a fun one. In Europe is a country called Germany. And in Germany they have bats. But when I was researching it, I found out the bats in Germany are endangered. They're dying. They have a problem with bats in Germany. So pretty soon there might not be any bats there. So we're going to make a bat today out of a coffee filter. You are going to get your instructions for this. This one came from, I think it's Darcy and Brian. Darcy and Brian have a website and I just copied their coffee filter bat craft. It says it should take 20 minutes of active time, 20 minutes total time. Difficulty, it's easy. So you're going to need, they asked for wooden clothespins. Well, I happen to get some of those plastic colored clothespins. So I'm just gonna use them. I think it'd be fun to have a colored bat. He doesn't have to be black, but they used the wooden clothespins and they painted them. So in here it says, You'll need black acrylic paint and a paintbrush. You don't, unless you're making some more of your own at home with wooden clothespins. I'm going to send these colored clothespins with you. You're going to need round coffee filters. I will just give you one coffee filter to make your bat with, since we have two crafts on our bag this time. But coffee filters are pretty easy to get a hold of. You might even have some at home. You'll need a round coffee filter. I have some more right here. Yours won't look like mine because I've already colored it. Coffee filters like to stick together. You think you're getting one and you get five. So let me take that, there we go. So you will get a round coffee filter. You will get assorted googly eyes. I will send some eyes with you. You will need to use washable markers. We have Crayola washable markers. If you don't use washable, it's not gonna work when you spray the water on it. So make sure the markers you use are washable. So you'll need washable markers. They said black, blue, and purple, which is what I did with mine. But you know what? I think it'd be kind of fun to make them red, make them brown. You can do whatever colors you want to on your bat. Just because it says those colors doesn't mean that's what you have to do. Then it says liquid glue with a fine tip applicator. Well, the glue is for gluing the eyeballs on, and I just have my Elmer's glue all. We're gonna try that for gluing our eyeballs on. If you have craft glue at home, great, use it. Then it says you need the paint and the paintbrush, black cardstock. Oh, I forgot the black cardstock. You're gonna use that to make his ears. I'll put some black cardstock in there so you can just cut him out some triangle ears. You'll be able to see it on the picture. You're gonna need scissors. It says a white gel pen. Well, since I'm not using clothespins and I'm painting black, I don't need the white gel pen. I could just use a black marker. And then a pencil. What do I need the pencil for? Then it says tools. If you are using the, black, or the clothespins to paint black, you will need a scrap of cardboard so you can stick the clothespins on the cardboard and then you can paint them without getting your fingers all painted. That's what that is for. 
A non-stick craft mat. Well, guess what? I didn't have a non-stick craft mat, but I have lots of grocery bags. I have a Lynn's grocery bag, and that's what I'm using for my craft mat. And a water spray bottle. I do happen to have a water spray bottle. If you don't, that's okay. You can still put water in a cup and put your fingers in it and splatter it on there. It works kind of fun if you have the spray bottle, but you don't have to have it. You can figure out a way to drop water on your coffee filter. Okay, instructions. Flatten coffee filters and draw patterns with the blue, black, and purple washable markers. Place the colored coffee filter on a craft mat and spritz with water. Clip the clothespins to a scrap of cardboard and then you paint them if you're gonna do that painting part, which you don't have to with this one. Glue the eyes to the clothespin, let it dry. Draw a mouth and teeth they have with the white gel pen on the black, but you can use a marker because we're using the colored ones. Um, you have to let the coffee filter dry. I got mine pretty wet and it took probably a half an hour to 45 minutes for it to dry. So you're gonna have to have some patience and I'll show you a few things I did too. Once that is dry, you are going to fold your coffee filter in fourths, which is in half and in half again, and then cut a scalloped edge. Then unfold the filter once so it is folded in half. Cut a three inch slit up from the scalloped edge, open the clothespin and insert the coffee filter wings and cut little triangle ears from black cardstock and glue to the clothespin. It says you could easily make just one or several at a time. This would be a great, and it says up here, it would be great for Halloween decorating. Well, we're not decorating for Halloween. We're talking about the bats being endangered in, in Germany, over in Europe. So you can make as many as you want. Hang them up around the house, hang them outside in your trees. And they say, if you wanna show them a picture of yours, did you make the project, you wanna show them a picture? you can send them one. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started. I did this practice one because I wanted to know how long it was going to take for my paper to dry. I'm gonna set it aside. I'm gonna put my mat, my paper bag, right underneath me because I'm going to start getting messy. And the first thing you do is flatten this out. I hope I'm not cutting my head off in the video like I did on the first one. Ugh. Flatten that out. Now, you just take your washable markers, your Crayola markers, and I think I'm gonna do some different colors this time. And I think I'm gonna do some of this yellow-orange, and I'm gonna do, do I have a brown? I have a brown. And oh, I have to do some black. Now, this you do not have to be an artist to do this. You just scribble it on there. You'll notice I did some black on the inside and I just scribbled. I did, you know, swirly whirlies, scribble up and down. You do not have to be an artist. I did that on the inside because I wanted to give it to some color for the black. Now let's, oh, maybe I will use some red. I'm going to put some red in the middle. I'm again, I'm not making it really perfect. Just color the red in there. And since the coffee filter is, it, things will bleed through. That is why you want to make sure you are doing it on your paper because otherwise you're gonna have marker all over your table. And since they're marshable, washable markers, it will wash off, but it's just as easy to cover it up. Okay, now I'm gonna put my red away. Here's where I'm going to make some orange. And I'm not doing anything specific. I am just drawing lines. I'm just putting some lines all the way around it. If you wanted to color rainbows around it, you could. It's just however you want to do it. If you want to color it in solid, you can. It's your bat. So I've gone all the way around it like that. 
Now I'm gonna take my brown and I'm gonna do some swirlies around the edge. Just swirly, swirly, swirlies. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do this. See how I'm just making swirlies around the edge? I think my brown marker is about out of juice. It's running out of brown color marker. And you know what? I'm going to go in with my orange and I'm going to put some brown stripes in with my orange. And I'm going to do the same thing with my red. I'm going to take my red back out and I'm just going to do some put some red in there like that. Now comes the fun part. This is where you are going to put your markers away so they're out of your way. Put them in there, put them in here. It's always best to clean up behind yourself because you don't want mom to have to do the cleaning up behind you. You can do that. Set my markers aside, set these guys out of the way. Now comes the fun part. This is where you spray it. Now. I've got my colored side up, the marker side that I colored, and just. Now I wanted to make sure my, my colors were going to mix, so I did get mine pretty wet. You might not have to make it that wet. I don't know. I made mine pretty wet. And then I turned it over, and I spritzed it some more with some water. Oh my gosh, it is so wet. But can you see how the colors are starting to mix a little bit? Now, I wanted to try this. I didn't have all the coffee filters with me when I did it the first time. I wanted to see. I set my piece of paper, no, actually, I set some paper towels over it to kind of dry it off a little bit. And look what happened to my paper towel. Isn't that pretty? I wondered what would happen if I took another coffee filter and just set it down on top of it. You, I'm gonna make a mess. So I'm gonna grab my paper towel. Do you think I will get a transfer? Do you think it will transfer? Oh my goodness. Look at that. It did, it's a lighter one. Oh, if I want to make my colors bleed a little bit more, I might add a little bit more water, get a paper towel, kind of mess with it, just pounce it around on there. Oh, look at that. Oh, maybe yellow is not such a great color to use or orange. He's going to fade away. Well, now I want to let this dry. My paper's really wet, so I just got a scratch piece of paper and I set my wet coffee filter on it so it could dry. Now, like I said, if, I, if you take some of the water off of it so it's not quite as wet, it will dry a little bit quicker. That's kind of fun. Maybe I will send a couple of coffee filters with you so you can play around with it. I need to set this aside and it's going to take half an hour to 45 minutes for it to dry, so you have to be patient. And that is why I made one ahead of time. Move this over, get it out of my way. While you're waiting for yours to dry, that's when you can do your eyeballs. Okay. Because it says color the, the coffee filter, spritz it with water, paint your clothespin if you're going to, and then glue the eyes to the clothespin. I'm going to find some eyeballs in here. You will notice on the picture, on the instructions, that there are two different sizes of eyeballs. So I'm going to pick out two different sizes of eyeballs here. Let's see. I better look at my picture because when I glue this on, my eyeballs need to be at the top of the pinchy. Not where I pinch my fingers at, but at the top where it pinches together. So, I'm gonna get my glue all. We'll see if this works, my Elmer's glue. 
I'm gonna put a dot. Looks like they put their eyeballs pretty close up to the top. So I'm gonna put a dot of glue there. Come on, glue. There we go. I'm gonna put a dot of glue there. Need to clean out my glue. And I'm gonna put a dot of glue there. So I have my two dots of glue on there. I'm gonna put one eyeball on. I have to lick my finger to get it to stick. I'm gonna put one eyeball on there. Ooh, the glue's running all over. I'm gonna put my other eyeball on the other side. <laughs> I love it. The eyeballs are gonna stick off the edge. You're gonna see the eyeballs are big. They're gonna stick off the edge and that's all right. But now you need to let those eyeballs dry. You need to make sure they're not gonna fall off. Actually, I wonder if I'd be better to do it the other way. It says you can use the white gel marker to give him a mouth. Well, I'm just gonna use, I probably would find a permanent marker because washable marker is just gonna rub, wash off. I'm just gonna make him, for right now, there's his mouth, I gave him a smile. And on their sample, they gave him teeth. So I'm gonna give him some triangle teeth. <laughs> See, washable marker doesn't work so well, it messes up. Use a permanent marker. But there he is, there's his eyeballs, there's his teeth. If his eyeballs are dry, which I know they're not, then we go on to the next part with your dry coffee filter. It says fold the coffee filter in fourths, which is fold it in half once, then fold it in half again. So you're gonna have a triangle. And cut a scallop edge. Do not cut the point, cut the edge. So I'm gonna cut a scallop. Cut up, cut up. I'm just gonna cut. Scallops in my bat's wings. There it is, didn't cut off a lot, just a little bit. Then unfold it once. So it's in half. Ooh, this is gonna look like a butterfly rather than a bat, but it's my bat. Okay, unfold the coffee filter once so it's folded in half. Cut a three inch slit up from the scalloped edge. So I'm gonna go from the middle and I'm gonna cut up three inches. I'm gonna say that's about two. So I'm gonna go one and a little bit more. If you wanna measure it, if you wanna get out the uh, ruler and measure it, you can. Just don't cut it all the way to the edge. Then open the clothespin and insert the coffee filter wings. <laughs> My eyes are sliding down. Whoops. I think I'm going to pinch it. Oh, you know what? When I pinched it, wings are flapping. Does he look like theirs? No, not bad. You might look at yours. Now he's looking like, I think he's looking more like a butterfly. I think I need to change his wings to do more scalps. But now I need my black paper so I can cut some triangle. Do I have, let's practice with this one. I'm going to cut some triangle ears. I could just color this black. Let's try it. I promise I will have black paper in yours. I'm gonna cut some triangle ears. These ears are gonna be way too big. We need smaller triangle ears. And you will glue on 
the triangle ears. <laughs> I'm gonna just put some glue up here. My glue will come down. There we go. And then I'm gonna put a triangle ear there. And I'm gonna put a triangle ear there. <laughs> and voila, I have a bat who looks like a butterfly. Maybe he's a butterfly bat. I think I really need to give him more scallops, the right kind. You'll be able to see what they did on theirs. And when he's all dry, you have a bat to decorate at your house. And think about the bats in Germany that are becoming extinct. Find out why are they becoming extinct. And those are, are our animals from Europe. I hope you will come into the library and grab a grab and go bag so you can make your own bat and hedgehog and explore the animals from Europe. Thanks for joining me today. I will be back next week live in person and I'll be waiting to see you. Take care. Bye.